Ooh, what's cracking, folks? It is I, CFK Crow, here to bring you some more TEW 2016 as WCW in 2001. Name WCW, it lives again. Tonight we have WCW Bash at the Beach, and here's our card for tonight. In the pre-show, we have a number one contendership match for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship featuring Billy Kidman, Gregory Helms, La Parca, Kiwi, James Maritato, and Jamie Noble. Then to start off the main show, we have the third, well, second singles match between Shane Douglas and Hugh Morris. Granted, it might have been one like a month or two ago, but I don't actually remember, and I probably should look at my notes. But that takes time, which I don't. Well, I do have plenty of, but that's that's not the point. Anyway, uh, Shane Douglas is looking for revenge after his loss to Shane, not Shane, his loss to Hugh Morris the other week on Raw, Raw, Nitro. That eliminated him from being a part of the World Championship match. We have Royal Warrior Animal and Sean Stasiak in an uncensored match for the WCW Heavyweight. Oh my god. Hardcore Championship. What time is it? It's only 8.30 in the morning. I mean, no, it's 8.30 at... Gosh, words. 8.30 at night. Granted, I recorded the last episode today, like, 10 hours ago. But that's... That's, that's not important. We have Chavo Guerrero Jr. and Super Crazy uh, in a match for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. We have my phone vibrating. And the Natural Born Thriller is going up against Chronic for the WCW World Tag Team Championships. Okay. We have the Boogie Knights versus the FBI versus Punk and Cabana in a number one contendership match for the tag team titles. Is that place right? That seems weird. Wait, let me, let me reverse that. Reverse that? Yeah, reverse that. Matter of fact, do that. Maybe put this all the way up there, too. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Why does my phone keep buzzing? What do you want, people? All right. Uh, yeah, I switched that. So now it's the Boogie Knights versus the FBI versus Punk and Cabana for the number one contendership for the Tag Team Championships. Then we have Lance Storm versus Canyon in the match for the... Oh, no disqualification match for the WCW United States Championship. I'm just saying this shit. All right, I'm I'm fucking lagging behind. All right, then we have Natural Born Thrillers versus Quantum for the tag team titles. We have Sting versus Dustin Rose in a grudge match, and we have Booker T versus Jeff Jarrett for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. All right, let's get right into the show and pause. Unpause. All right, we are into the show. Let's start this pre-show and this pay-per-view off on a good foot. On a good foot. By the way. If this pay-per-view does poorly, I'm totally resetting it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anyways. All right. In a pre-show bout that had decent wrestling, but little heat, Billy Kidman defeated Gregory Helms, La Parca, Kiwi, James Maritato, and Jamie Noble in 1418 when Billy Kidman defeated James Maritato by pinfall with a shooting star press. In terms of in-ring work, Billy Kidman was head and shoulders above everyone else. Next back's being Greg. Good guy, Greg. I have good things for you in the near future, Helms. Very good things. But the time is Kidman's. That's a pre-show, 68. All right. The show starts off with Eric Bischoff in the ring with his assistant, welcoming everybody to the second pay-per-view in the new era of WCW Bash at the Beach. He hopes that everyone has a good time down here in Oklahoma. He says that tonight we have several title matches in store. As a matter of fact, all of our titles will be defended. We have the most anticipated match between Sting and Dustin Rhodes. But to start things off, we have Hugh Morris and Shane Douglas. Let's get this show 
on the road. And what the fuck? Right, they had great chemistry. I forgot. Oh man, that started the crowd hot. <laughs> And Balor had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Shane Douglas defeated Hugh Morris in 11:23 by pinfall with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. That's how you get the crowd started. This is a feeling worth revisit in the future, cause that's money. That's money. All right, I can't follow that up. Yeah. Mm. In a decent match, Sean Stasiak defeated Road Warrior Animal in 834 by pinfall. Sean Stasiak makes defense number three of his WCW Hardcore title. Afterwards, Mike Sanders and well, Road Warrior Animal's walking back, and Mike Sanders is following him. Mike's like, look, Animal, Animal, Animal. I understand you're upset. The match didn't go your way. No, I didn't want to interfere because I know you can handle it yourself. You're, well, you're an animal, right? And I just feel like if you allow me, above average Mike Sanders, to help you out, you won't just be the road warrior animal. You'll be the above average animal. Eh? Eh? What do you say? Come on, big guy. Come on. Animal stands there for a few moments and shrugs. He says, sure, let's do this, Mr. Above Average. So, terrible face, it turned pretty well. Pretty good. Complete success. And it worked. We have two more faces, Animal and Above Average Mike Sanders. We've been really weak on the face side. And I came up with an idea recently for Mike Sanders, which involves Animal and maybe someone else who could use his managerial services as a face. All right. Next, in a bout that had decent wrestling but didn't have much heat, Chavo Guerrero Jr. defeated cra cra Super Crazy in 9-14 by pinfall by using underhanded tactics. Uh, Let's say he... Pulled a steel trout the ring, hit Super Crazy with it, and got it back in while the raft was distracted by La Parka coming out, and then Billy Kidman coming out to stop La Parka from interference. Uh, Chavo Guerrero Jr. makes defense number two of his WCW Cruiserweight title. Chavo carried that match, but it was a good match. Okay. After that, in a bout that had decent wrestling but little heat, the Boogie Knights defeated the FBI and Punk and Cabana in 826. It wasn't elimination. Why does it say elimination? Uh, but yeah, Disco and Alex are just a little bit ahead of the rest of the guys. But Punk and Cabana will be there soon. All it needs a couple of big wins. But Colt and Julio are getting better. That's good. Okay. We have a hype package replaying the recent history for the WCW United States Championship. Have it being won by Diamond Dallas Page at the last pay per view, but after the match, Canyon injuring Page. Also, re recollecting that Canyon and Lance Storm fought in the tournament to decide the winners, uh, where Canyon won in a highly contested match, a very close match. Uh, since then, Lance Storm has been on his toes, working incredibly hard to be as technical as possible, to have his mind set, ready to. Be victorious by his own skill. While Canyon is being incredibly overly aggressive. And it's very strange. A darker side of Canyon that we have not seen in a very long time. And in a decent match. Lance Storm defeated Canyon in 1559 by pinfall. Following interference from Diamond Dallas Page. Lance Storm wins the United States Championship. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Uh, backstage, Mean Gene Oakland is interviewing Brian Adams, Brian Clark, uh, Brian Adams and Brian Clark about their upcoming match for the tag team titles. Uh, they're interrupted by Disco Inferno and Alex Wright, who are the new number one contenders for said tag team titles. Uh, they have a little stare down for a second. Uh, most importantly, uh, Chronic say that they're going to beat up. Hmm. Maybe that should be their thing. 
or they do the whole Gals Anderson AJ Styles. They're going to beat up the natural born thrillers. Beat up. Beat up pit. I like that. Beat up. Turn changes. You're not even in this segment. Okay. Then in a decent match, uh Crank defeated the Natural Born Thrillers in eleven fifteen when Sean O'Hare was counted out. Yes. Where Sean O'Hare was counted out while fighting Brian Adams. The match had a lot of interference. The entirety of the FBI came out and interfered on behalf of the Natural Born Thrillers. The Thrillers lost, but they retained their tag team championships. Uh, backstage, Oakland uh, is waiting for the Thrillers to come out to interview them, uh, but they are bickering. Uh, Chuck Palumbo is, you know, he's happy. They got, I mean, they didn't get the win, but they got the belts. That's the most important thing. But Sean O'Hare is like, no, I wanted to win. I want to prove that we are natural born. We don't need help to beat anybody. We can do it ourselves. We're monsters. Those chronic scrubs. I need a 90s. I need a 2001 term. Uh, Ass hats. Does that work? Ass hats. Those ass hats chronic. Chronic. Those ass hats. No, that doesn't work. I'll figure something out, never. Um, so, yeah, uh, prove that they could beat Chronic easily. Gibby also comes out, it's like, fellas, 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 no need to argue. Look, with the belts around your waist, the important thing is that that's great marketing. Excellent marketing. Who cares how you win the belts? The important thing is that you have them. Of course, Sean O'Hare disagrees with that and storms out. Keep going. Dustin Rose cuts an incredibly cryptic promo uh, with tons of burning American flags and lots of black and white for sticks for sting. Uh, basically saying, I'm coming for you, nigga. That's the gist of it. <clears throat> and then, okay. And about that good heat and decent wrestling, Dustin Rose defeated Sting in 12-24 by pinfall, illegally using the ropes for leverage. Okay. It was an okay match. Eh. Then, there is a video package for Booker T versus J-A-R-R-E-T-T, uh, basically recalling the prior month's feud of Booker T and Ric Flair. Why is my phone? Go away, everyone. Just please go to sleep forever. Um, what was that? What was I saying? Yes, we're rec- calling their prior feud between Booker T and Ric Flair, and Jeff Jarrett being the new Ric Flair's stand-in. Uh, how Ric has been in- involved in this feud heavily, and please be good. Ah, it's solid. In an exceptional match, Booker T defeated Jeff Jarrett in twenty-one twenty-one by pinfall with the Harlem Hangover. During the match, we had Ric Flair running and attack Booker. Booker T makes defense number one of his WCW World Heavyweight Championship. They both had good in-ring performances, but psychology wasn't wasn't up to stuff. There's only three penalties. Psychology, crowd was already at an emotional high, and Booker T's physical declining. Should have been better than that. I guess I should have tanked the last match? Maybe? I suppose. I guess psychology's a big hit. I need some guys with great psychology. I thought Jeff had better psychology. Maybe I should have scripted it. Or maybe I or did I call it in the ring? I might have called it in the ring actually, and I was supposed to check afterwards, but I did. Anyway, end of show. 80. Up in 30, down in two. That is acceptable. That is 100 percent acceptable. Speeches. Uh Shane Douglas. Good. Uh Dustin. Some encouragements. Yeah, that match wasn't as good as I expect. I, I wanted it to be better than that. And I'm playing big things for you, okay? And then Canyon. Encouragement. I need you to do some, some good stuff. I'll just make the speech. Please, please, please. All right. Tony Santorelli. One half of the team known as TNT. All right, what's the deal? Con- Taka? Taka. Face? 
face. Face. Yes. Mom Luke wants a better push. Pushes are coming tonight. Pushes always come the night of a paper after pay per view, the day after a pay per view. All right. Oh, let's go to this roster. Go to auto push. Go to Ted. Okay, good. Auto push everybody. And you'll see the progress of this next time. Thank you all for watching, folks. And uh, peace.